Welcome back. Last video, we worked on a lot of the gameplay, and it's basically done. We just need a few more changes, and this one we're going to work on a title screen. So, I went ahead already, and I made a copy of my old scene, and I'm starting to work on the title screen interface. So when I press play here, um, we have title of the game, and we have stuff going on in the background, because I just copied our other scene over. I still have it here, the space scene. But they're two different scenes now. And there's actually a weird problem with my text where it won't stay the right color. I think I just fixed it though. But for some reason my text wouldn't turn white. It would just stay black. But I think I just fixed it somehow. Um, so yeah, we're working on the title screen now. You can make it look like whatever you want. But I'm just going to go through some of the scripting things you have to do when working on your title screen. Like buttons and like what each button does. So we're going to take a normal button here, place it down, and we're going to change our text to the Arcade Classic, increase its size, and make the text be maybe like a that color. Good, that's good. I also want to make this highlighted color visible usually. Now let me walk you through this. So we're going to change our source image to I don't have a square here, but I do want to make one, so I'm going to go down here and create a new sprite and make a square. And now I'm going to change my source image to that square, so we get nice um, solid edges. And I'm going to take this button and extend it out very far, and also scale down its size so it's like this. This is going to look really nice, trust me. Lower the font size of our play button, we're going to make it say play. And now we're going to take this thing here. We're going to make the normal color be invisible. But when you highlight over it, we're going to make it have like sort of like an alpha tone to it. Maybe like a little gray. And then we're going to have the same thing for pressed, I guess. And the same thing for disabled. It doesn't really matter what your disabled is. But if you do that, and when we highlight over it, we get like that cool fade on our play button. I like that a lot, actually. Maybe I'll make the um, the click down. We'll get a little bit darker. So we'll just raise our alpha a little bit more. Now when we go over play and we press, it kind of does that. And that's pretty cool. Let's take our play button, copy it, and we're going to make a quit button. And if I had a high scoreboard, then we'll do um, a high score button too. So we have play and quit for now. Play the game, we can quit the game. Um, apparently I only copied the text right there. Let me just undo that until it's gone. And just copy the whole button and move it down. That's much better. <coughs> I'm gonna call it quit. Okay, so we're gonna need to make a new script and we're gonna call it the um, button functions. Okay, and now within our button functions, let that load up a bit. I would skip ahead, it might take a little bit, just saying. Should have had that open earlier. Okay, we're in. So if you've watched any other tutorials, you've probably seen me do this before, where I have a button function class. And we're just going to have public void um, quit in here, as always. And that's just going to call, um, I ran some lag. Loads in. Oh, shit. That's going to load in our application dot quit, which just quits the game. That's what our quit button will do. And we're going to also need public void, um, I guess we'll call it start for like starting the game. And that's going to use our scene manager actually. So we got to import using um, Unity Engine dot scene manager or scene management. And now we're going to call scene manager dot load scene. And we're going to load one index higher than the current scene we're loaded. 
or we'll just load scene one to make things easier. <clears throat> so that's what start will do. Let's go take our button functions we have here. And we're going to put it onto an empty now. Follow me on this, it's kind of weird. It's the way that buttons work in Unity. We're going to call it button functions. And we're going to attach our button function script onto this, drag it down into a prefab, delete it from the scene, and now go to both of our buttons by shift highlighting them, and then adding a little on click. Now we're going to take our button function, drag it onto there. And now we can use both of these with our button functions. So the play button is going to be using the button function thing we just created called start, and the other one going to use quit. Cool. Now if we go to our um, <coughs> build settings and we put our title screen first and our space second, yeah this is an index of one and when we were scripting the other one we had to load this scene with an index of one. That's what that means, it's just going to load that scene. So we can press play. And now if we press quit it will quit the game if we were actually like in a compiled version of it or if we press play it will not play the game. And now we're, we're in. A few more things we have to do though, because our score doesn't get reset. We need to reset our score. So we're going to open up our button function here. And not only are we going to load the scene, but first we're going to do player press, so capital PP enter dot set int. And we're going to set that score in we had to zero. And then we load up the game. Now we go to here. We're in our space shooter title screen, press play, we have zero score. And um, now we can get score for destroying stuff. So another thing I wanted to add in was like a little effect where lasers, when they hit something, they explode. And I also wanted to add a new method to destroying stuff that goes off the screen that's a little bit more efficient with kill zoning. Both things are pretty easy. And to do them, so we're gonna do that real quick. So if we go to our space scene, and we're gonna take a <clears throat> an empty object, Control Shift N, and we're gonna attach a box collider to it, and just make its X size be extremely long. Also, we're in the middle of nowhere right now, so we're gonna zero it out and press um, F on our ship, I guess, just so we're like in the right area. Okay. We're gonna drag down our kill zone thing, like about here maybe, and we're gonna call it kill zone. We're gonna make it a trigger, and we're gonna add a new script called kill zone. And if you've been following the tutorials, you might have noticed that we had, you know, different things destroy themselves in a certain amount of time, and our bullets will, you know, kill themselves after five seconds and so on just to prevent clutter but kill zones will cover that and it's perfect for this game the way it works we'll open up our kill zone script and very simply we're going to do void on trigger enter 2d and we're going to have our collider 2d and we're going to call it coal and now Anything, regardless of what it is, is going to get destroyed that touches this. So we're just going to destroy game object. That's all there is to it. So anything that enters this kill zone will be destroyed. And I'm also going to put one above the whole scene. We just want to make sure that our bounds don't intersect our kill zone, or we're going to have a lot of issues. Our bounds will get destroyed instantly. So right now it looks like there is intersection. Let me move that down a bit. And now these two things shouldn't be intersecting anymore. They look like they are, but they're not actually intersecting. Now we're going to move another kill zone above here. We have our bounds and then our kill zone. And if we look at our game in scene view, we turn off the minimize, I mean maximize mode. If you look at our game in scene view now, our game, uh, um, they're all just destroying themselves when they hit that area. So if you want to take a better look at what's going on down there, we have our kill zone and nothing is passing through it. Anything that goes in this section of the screen just disappears. And if we were to shoot lasers, our lasers would also disappear as they hit the top. 
So this is actually the best way, in my opinion, to prevent clutter in these types of games, because you can just destroy anything that goes off screen. So anything you see will be here, but everything else just gets deleted right when it goes off screen. It's extremely efficient. Super nice too. So kill zoning is totally the way to go. We can even go as far as going into our enemies and stuff and deleting, you know, our start function where we destroy ourselves. Go into our bullet and deleting this too. We don't need that anymore. Go to our spaceship. I don't think we even have anything in our start, which is why we don't need it. I don't know how that A got there. Just save everything. Let's see, um, destroy self in time. I don't know what we even attach this to, honestly. I don't remember. Probably the explosions, which we do need it on. Because explosions aren't going to pass through our kill zone. But now without those functions, um, we automatically have things dealing with the disposal of objects that are unnecessary. So we don't need timers anymore, we don't need to make approximations, you can just make your game however you want, and stuff will die when it needs to die. Also make sure that your top kill zone isn't in line with where they're spawning in, or they're just going to destroy themselves when they get in. The whole point of the top kill zone is so when we're in the game and we shoot lasers, the lasers get destroyed when they hit that top area, so we don't get that many um, bullets spawning in. That's it for this tutorial. I guess there will be another part because I do want to go over making a leaderboard and making a little lives thing here. So if you die, you could respawn. And we'll do that in the next tutorial. Maybe there will be two more videos if I keep making 10 minute videos. So, thanks for watching. See you next time.